people really underestimate the skill set that they have because they're so focused on, they're so focused, how do I say this? They're so focused on like their job title versus the work they're actually doing day to day. Mm -hmm. Forget, throw your job title out of the window. What is your day to day task? What are your day to day tasks? Is it more product management? You have to write that out um, in order to really see it. Or just like talk to somebody about teachers. There's so many teachers in the classroom trying to transition out and go to get into tech, whether that's ed tech or be a tech sales or a pro program manager. Teachers have so many different skill sets so many but a lot of some of some of them still may be focused on oh i just sit up here and teach kids no you you build curriculums you build relationships with the parents you have administrative tasks to do so many skill sets good morning good evening and good afternoon and yes i have a special guest with us today I have none other than Calicia, who's here to join us for this special conversation. We're gonna be talking about tech in a way that can be geared towards students. So if you know any young students, students that are trying to find their way, this is a great conversation for them to be a part of. So without further ado, you know how this conversation normally goes. We're gonna start from the boots, which is symbolic of the journey, one taste to get to where Ms. Johnson is, and then we're gonna take it a bit further and talk about the mindset, the brain, that's right. The mindset one needs to have not only to be where she is and not to be there is great, but to also scale from there. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it to you. And you can talk about your life in the very beginning where you were born and raised because the beginning is a great place to start. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So hey, everybody, my name is Kalicia Johnson. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, born and raised. I did, after graduating from high school, I went down to Florida a and University in Tallahassee, Florida. Go Rattlers. That's where I majored in mechanical engineering. From there, I started working for a year um, at a chemical facility in Tennessee. Ended up getting laid off, actually, my first, uh, within nine months of working there. So my first job out of college got laid off. But luckily, I had already applied to grad school because Tennessee just wasn't for me. <laughs> So ended up going to LSU for grad school. So I moved to Baton Rouge. I also did mechanical engineering, not because I just love engineering so much, but because um, I was a minority in STEM, I could get like different scholarships and pay for school. And I was all about not having any student loans or paying for education. So that worked out great. Um, so I went to LSU, got my master's in mechanical engineering. Um, once I graduated from LSU, I then moved down to New Orleans, where I started my career again at Dow Chemical Company. I worked as a maintenance engineer. So, you know, I was out in the chemical plant, hard hat, steel toe boots, um, fire retardant clothing on, being doing maintenance. So I was working on lots of fixed and rotating equipment for the engineers out there, uh, pumps, compressors, heat exchangers, vessels. You name it, I touched it. <laughs> so that was really fun. I love being hands-on. Eventually, I got kind of tired of uh, the work there, and I really wanted to move into big oil. I had a lot of friends that were living in Houston at the time, and I also just wanted to transition to continue to accelerate my career. So I actually went to a NSBE conference, the National Society of Black Engineers, after two years of working at Dow. Uh, a lot of times people think of NSBE as they're only going to look at students, but there are some a lot of professionals actually that go to NSBE for different career opportunities. So I attended the conference. I can't remember where it was, but this had to be 2013. I attended the conference talked to all the oil, big oil companies and ended up getting a job offer at Chevron. So I joined Chevron and then I moved to Houston. Super, super excited because I had been trying to get to Houston forever since undergrad and it just didn't work out. Uh, so now it was, it was a perfect timing. So I joined Chevron as a facilities engineer in their upstream business. So I started working on subsea equipment. That's basically everything, all the big equipment that sits on the bottom of the ocean floor, which was awesome had a lot of experience there. And then about, about four, four or five years or so, I moved to Midland, Texas. And if you know anything about Midland, Texas, it's West Texas in the middle of nowhere, about seven or eight hours from Houston. Uh, <laughs> personal life was probably nothing. <laughs> um, very few African-Americans out there, pretty much nothing to do. It's basically an oil town. 
and my personal, my mental health struggled, relationships struggled just because I was no longer in the big city. So, but hindsight at that, it was probably my best job in, of my career. Uh, very hands-on. I was owning a lot of different projects, getting tons of vis visibility, having a ton of impact as well. After those two and a half years, I was able to move back to Houston uh, and start working back downtown at the Chevron office. And then the pandemic hit. So at that time, I was, you know, it was so much going on in the world. Um, I just started to, you know, think about my career a little bit. One thing I did learn through the pandemic was that life is short. And so I was, I just want to make sure that I was putting myself in the best position possible to have a diverse, uh, diverse work experiences and just explore different things. So started looking on LinkedIn and attending different conferences um, and just started networking with people more. I knew I wanted to make a transition out of the industry and just try something else. I was learning more and more about tech and the different roles within tech and just trying to hone in on the transferable skills I had to see where in tech I would fit in. Like as a mechanical engineer, I never thought that a career in tech would be for me because it seemed like all the mechanical engineers were like in the hardware space and I didn't want to do hardware. I didn't know anything about computers or anything like that. So I had really had no idea until I started doing more research and just talking to various people. Uh, so I attended a conference, you know, fall 2020, um, people from all across all, all across all industries. Um, it was virtual, so I actually downloaded the attendee list and just started reaching out to people on LinkedIn, sending code messages, basically saying, hey, I saw you also attended this conference, you know, since it was virtual and we weren't able to connect, we'd love to, you know, uh, take 30 minutes to just learn more about your career and what you do. And I was targeting people outside the oil and gas industry, of course. So I was meeting people at NASDAQ, at Target, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, you name it. I probably had a coffee chat with them, which was super enlightening because I just saw the passion that they had for their careers. And I learned about so many different roles that I honestly had no idea about. Um, so it was cool. I was like, wow, there's a, you know, a world out there for me. And one of the people that I actually cold messaged ended up being my boss. Um, so uh, it was just like perfect timing. Um, it just shows the power of LinkedIn as well, just to let people know what you're looking for, what you're interested in, and having those conversations, those career conversations. Um, it's super helpful. So I applied. You know, a lot of times they tell you the best time to look for a job is when you have one. So I applied, not expecting anything, and I got the offer which completely changed my life. And I'm so thankful for it. So it was crazy because once I put my two weeks in, you know, I had so many people reaching out to me just like, wow, how did you go from, you know, a facilities engineer out in the middle of West Texas in the middle of nowhere with your hard hat, still toe boots, you know, working on big equipment to being a product manager at Xbox. I'm like, <laughs> you just gotta put yourself out there. Um, faith, a little bit of luck. And just hard work and identifying those transferable skills to help you pivot into that new career. So it's been awesome. I've learned so much um, just being in the tech industry, so many different roles. Um, and we can get more into that later. But um, that's my story. So Hey there. Thank you so much for watching this video. This video is actually sponsored by Course Careers. So whether you're interested in breaking in as a tech sales representative, if you're interested in actually doing IT or digital marketing, not only do they have free introductory courses for you right now, go to the description and check that out, but they also have $50 off that you could get from, through me, Joseph50. That's right, $50 off through Joseph50. So if you're interested in getting into that course, any which one, whether it's, again, tech sales, IT, or digital marketing, look no further. Go down to the description below, click on the link and sign up right now. What are you waiting for? I love it. Oh my goodness. You got me laughing here. You got me pausing. You go like, oh wow. No, I this is this is this is what tech stories are made of, right? And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people that I have come onto this platform, they talk about it and they're like, hey, I got my job through networking. <laughs> like I was either a lawyer, I was either trying to become a sales engineer, you name it. And it was the power of networking. So listen, y'all. Yeah. This is another evidence right here before you, another testimonial coming through that networking changed the game.
for Calicia. And that's amazing. Oh, but I got to go back and peel the onion. That's what we do here. We peel the onion back. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because you basically like, hey, they, they were offering more money. That's why I became a man. <laughs> that's why I decided to go into mechanics. I was like, oh, that's so smart. So, so talk about how, how that was, because I know that's going to be a really big part of your story. Getting into college, can you talk about that transition there? How did, that, how, how did your story unfold there? Yeah, well, growing up, there was a program called the Detroit Area Pre-College Engineering Program. Uh, the acronym is DAPSEP. And my mom had me enrolled in that since middle school. It was every Saturday morning, we'll go to an engineering class. And I was in there for like, say, six weeks. And then every wow. summer throughout high school, they would have programs, like residential programs for high school students to stay at Michigan State, University of Michigan, um, to various colleges throughout Michigan to just teach them engineering and get a feel for like what campus is like staying on campus. So, uh, and then, you know, Detroit is a motor city, right? So my dad was in automotive. So that's pretty much what I grew up. Um, I grew up wanting to be in the automotive industry because that's all I knew. Uh, so, and then of course they always say, well, you like math and science, you should go be an engineer. So that's kind of like how I fell into it. I feel like a lot of women in, in engineering has someone in their immediate family that's an engineer that kind of exposed them to engineering. Um, so that's how I got into it. I knew I wanted to go to an HBCU. Both of my parents went to an HBCU. My dad went to South Carolina State and my mom went to Spelman. So I pretty much just applied to HBCUs and got into Florida a and which I was awesome, nice. uh, super excited about. So I went down to Florida, which was a complete culture shock for me freshman year. Florida was so different from Michigan, um, yeah. and I had a great time down there. No, Florida is a lot of fun. Um, it, it could be, <laughs> depending on where you are. But no, absolutely. That, that you know, that that's kind of that's amazing because it's, it's true. Like what you're exposed to will kind of allow you to see what you can obtain, or at least in your mind, oh, that's what I could obtain. And so, right. you know, Detroit basketball, the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, you were able to be exposed to all that was happening in Detroit, um, the Motor City, and be able to translate that to mechanical engineering, which is, you know, I hear, uh, I, 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 I'm not going to lie, I'm not, I haven't seen a lot of, especially women of color in the mechanical engineering field, which is really cool for me to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, you won't you won't see a lot of them. Um, even the, so, even though I went to Florida A and M, our engineering school is actually com combined with Florida State. So our engineering classes were still a hundred people in there, with maybe about ten or less FAMU students. And then out of that ten, it was even less females. So uh, wow. I, I was like one of three or something like that in the class. So yeah. Wow. These programs, when you're talking about the fact that there's that many students in that class, these programs can be highly competitive. Did you feel the competition being mixed in with not just HBCU students, but also students from, as you mentioned, the state? Uh, no, not really. I didn't feel like it, it was any competition. Um, one thing that helped me during school is to have friends that were at least one grade uh, ahead of me. Smart. So I'm like, you know, every school year, every semester, I'm like, hey, do you still have your old tests, your old exams, your old labs? And sometimes the teachers kept it the exact same year over year. And that helped me tremendously. <laughs> that helped me tremendously. But it was just always good to have, you know, um, like a big brother, a big sister ahead of you, just kind of teaching you um, the ropes. So that was super helpful. But no, I didn't. I didn't think it was competitive at all. No, that is the hack right there. Because mm -hmm. it's true. Professors don't be changing it every year. They be yeah. like, Listen, <laughs> it took me hard enough to make this one copy. Y'all gonna just have to right. like, be copy A, copy B. That's it. Right, <laughs> I'm right. Not, not doing anything extra. Right. Oh man. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the way you just kind of painted that vivid picture. You know, you get into Chevron, you're doing all these different things, and then you're in the middle of nowhere in Midland, Texas. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so there must have been a lot of soul searching at that time, I would say, for yourself. Wouldn't you oh, agree? For like, sure. you're that like, first, that first, my first year, uh, I used pretty much all my Southwest points. I went ahead and booked every weekend. I was flying back to Houston. But eventually, after that first year, well, I didn't have any more points left. So then I had to start paying for flights, which was super expensive. You know, I was living in the heart of Houston at the time before I left for Midland. But when I moved to Midland, my rent was more expensive out there than it was in Houston. And then the flights were ridiculous. 
So yeah, it was it was just like why it was just like why am I here? Why did I accept this job? It was lots of like lots, lots of questioning that like why am I here? Was I know God has a purpose for me being here, and I can't wait to figure out what it is because I am miserable. Um, just I felt like I just had like lots of momentum in Houston going on at the time. I was involved in so many different organizations, and I'm like, wow, it's like that FOMO that I had, you know, when I was all the way, you know, seven eight hours away. I felt like I was missing out on everything. And, you know, when you aren't around, people were like, it's like out of sight, out of mind. So I didn't want people to, you know, it was hard for me to tell people that I didn't even live in Houston anymore because I still wanted to be invited to different events and invited to this and that. So for a while, I didn't tell anybody I, I even left because they would still see me every weekend. Um, but after after traveling every weekend, just living out of a suitcase, pretty much, it was just exhausting. So I just... Woo, I had to just accept accept it for what it was. Um, my boss and my management knew that I wasn't very happy there, but you know, I just tried to make the most of it. I knew I was there for a reason. Um, and like I said, it ended up being one of my most favorite, most impactful assignments um, that really helped me to you know continue to get promoted and things at Chevron. Yeah, and that's the thing I was going to point out is just that. We sometimes, and I'm using myself, Joseph here, you could be the Joseph that's in the prison and you're like, why am I here? But then you you rise up to be second in command in Egypt. And so it's kind of that situation where, you know, that that time of cultivation, that time of, of, of soul searching, like we just said, it really does refine you to make you into something that shines bright. And if you're watching this and you're saying, hey, you know, I feel like I'm in that place. I feel like I'm in that position in life where I am tired of my situation. I'm tired of my circumstance. I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this any longer. Then this is a conversation for you to dial in. So go ahead and use the comment section as your notepad. Write down notes that you've been here and here and just say, you know what? I want to change this. I want to change that in my life. Like this is your opportunity to take down some real life <laughs> applicable notes things that you can apply to your life right now and change things for you and that leads to the next thing i wanted to kind of highlight again which is that networking aspect of it like you literally said let me go dive deep let me go network let me go find out more about this tech side of stem because you were you I mean technically you were in the mechanical engineering the tech the engineering portion of it the e but let me go to this t side of the stem portion of of what I learned and dive into that. And so can we, I don't know if you, you touched on it, but I want to see if we could dive deeper into that story of how did you land up as the product manager with Xbox? If you don't mind kind of diving deeper. Yeah, sure. That. Just one point to your previous question. A lot of times, you know, I people always told me to always raise my hand for different projects that nobody wants to do. And mm. that's, what, that's how I ended up in Midland. And uh and that's how, you know, once I had that experience, because they were having so much trouble getting people to go out there. So once I went out there, it was like the respect that I gained because I went out there and stayed, you know, two and a half years and, you know, did all these different projects. It was like nobody could tell me nothing at that point. <laughs> yeah. So always raise your hand for projects, you know, things that people don't want to do because it's it's uh, it'll give, give you that credibility and um, people, will, the, the leadership team will appreciate you for it. Um, and you'll gain some great experience and visibility. But um, so for me, so my official title at Chevron at the time was called facilities engineer. And if I'm applying to tech, like that means nothing to them at all whatsoever. So I really had to just go through so many just different job descriptions to get more familiar with the language that they were using in the tech industry and converting my resume, which was super like engineering focused and to translate that into something that they can understand. So because I was doing lots of projects from beginning to end, you know, I just converted my whole LinkedIn and my resume to read more like a project manager for pretty much, you know, just talking about all the cross-functional teams I was working with, um, being able to look at the whole like product life cycle. So my product was building a facility um, so I was responsible for building facilities. Um, so when, so sorry, context, when you drill a well to get oil from out the ground, 
what's in that what's in those chemicals are oil gas and water so i was building an oil facility a water facility and a gas facility so that it can all be separated and go where they, where they need to be go go so i used those facilities that i was building as my product um and then all the cross-functional teams i was working with supply chain um, operations the electrical engineers like those management are, you know that's project product management i was managing a schedule i was working with contractors um, I was getting feedback from operations and, you know, making the next project better based on the things that went right or wrong. Um, so I, I learned about the basic fundamentals and skill set needed for a product manager and converted my whole LinkedIn and my resume to that. So it makes sense because, I mean, they don't they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I can't, you know, I, you, you'll talk to different people at different levels, you know. Um, so I just had to completely revamp all of that. So it's like in their language. And I think that's what really, really helped help me. Woo, you talk about Google Translate, you career translated right there. <laughs> that thing is, let, let me let me just pause for people who are watching in case they missed that. She took her little, legit career as a facilities, facilities engineer and custom made it to be product management. Like they do... Like and and use the transferable skills to basically like say from basically from English to Spanish, right? <laughs> you like trans. Wow, that is so good, y'all. Y'all need to be. Some of y'all need to go back and listen to that portion again and write down notes. Like I'll give you permission to pause, go back <laughs> and do that because I hear a lot of people saying like I don't have, I can't get into text because I don't have uh, the background, I don't have the experience, I have whatever. I mean. You don't you don't realize the value that you already for the things that you're already doing. Yes. Could you yes. talk about that? Because I, I I can sense I I can sense it already. You like mm, let me let me get on this. Keep, keep going. Talk about this. Yeah. No, that is so so true. People really underestimate the skill set that they have because they're so focused on. They're so focused. How do I say this? They're so focused on like their job title versus the work they're actually doing day to day. Like, forget, throw your job title out of the window. What is your day-to-day task? What are your day-to-day tasks like? Is it more product minute? Like, you have to write that out um, in order to really see it. Or just, like, talk to somebody about, like, teachers. There's so many teachers in the classroom trying to transition out and go to get into tech, whether that's ed tech or be a a tech sales or a program manager. Like, teachers have so many different skill sets. So many, but a lot of some of some of them still may be focused on. Oh, I just sit up here and teach kids. No, you have a, you 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 do you build curriculums, you build relationships with the parents, you have administrative tasks to do. Like it's so many skill sets um, that people have that they just you know overlook. When I used to interview, uh, go on campus and interview college students as a recruiter, um, I would like they'll be like, you know, I'm like, do you have any jobs even in high school or, you know, maybe freshman year you worked at Chick-fil-A or something. They're like, oh, well, that's a, that's not relevant to engineering. I'm like, but you still develop skills there. Mm-hmm. If you work at Chick-fil-A, you have great customer service skills. You're you're organized. You know how to work in a team. Like, don't underestimate how much those skills are so valuable when, you know, applying for jobs. So because so if so. If you're, if you're watching this and you don't think your current job applies to your, the role that you want, still put it on your LinkedIn, still put it on your resume, um, because there are some so many different skill sets that you're gaining, even if they're soft skills. Soft skills are, are super important, just as important as the technical skills. So don't underestimate those soft skills either. Hey, family, it's Joseph here again. Now, you have heard me talk about how tech sales has changed my life. I actually want to introduce you to another career that if you decide to go into it, truly is recession proof, and that is cybersecurity. Level Careers is a platform similar to Course Careers that's self-paced and allows you to obtain knowledge and ed- education in cybersecurity. And get this, without prior experience or a degree. That's right. And so you definitely want to get into that. And if you are interested in learning more about cybersecurity, go ahead and click the link below. It's in my description. And use my promo code JOSEPH10. That's right. Use my promo code JOSEPH10 in order to save 10% off of the purchase price of that course. So without further ado, I'm not going to delay you. Go click on the link, check out the free introductory courses and change your life today. 
Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that is it on the nail. And you know what's so funny? I'm going to add this as well. You talked about teachers. I, it's, so much, it's so amazing how I'm seeing so many people from the educational uh, arena get into this space, specifically in tech sales, because they are known to be presenters. They have to present right. to kids yeah. in stressful environments. They have to adapt. And so companies are looking for teachers exactly. and saying, because of these intangibles that you have, come on to the, come on to right. the dark side. Like, come on to the right, tech side. Right, exactly. Oh, man, this is so good. And I know I'm going to have to have you on for another whole Q&A and something like that later, because we're going to get into a lot of the stuff that you're doing that is really changing the game and helping people. And you kind of you kind of alluded to that a little bit about you recruiting, talking to students. Mm -hmm. So we're when, in that recruitment time. Yeah. Because I don't want I don't want I don't want to jump ahead. I'm trying to get all the nuggets right. <laughs> so it, it let, let, let's 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 talk. Actually, let me pause. I'm gonna hold that question. Let's talk about facilities management. You transition into being a product management. What were the what were the the good, bad, and ugly? Uh, of course, or whatever you can talk about. But the yeah. good, bad, and ugly of the tech industry that you're like, oh man, people need to know about this. From my experience, uh, being in this field. Well, I would say that imposter syndrome is real. You know, me coming from oil and gas, going to tech, a software company, a huge software company at that, like I know nothing about, I didn't know anything about tech, data center, CPU, GPU, and no, I don't know how to code. No, I don't have any certifications. Those are other things that a lot of people ask me a lot um, about how to transition, um, which we need to talk about that too. But um, imposter syndrome is real. And it literally took me a solid year just to figure out what the heck is going on here. Yeah. I went from a company that had about 40,000 employees to Microsoft that has over 100,000 employees. So just navigating the, the, navigating the company, all the resources available, all the benefits, um, you know, meeting people. I think my first month was just nothing but coffee chats with people on different teams, just, mm. just learning more about what they what they were doing. Um, so imposter syndrome is real. And, you know, when you join an organization, you know, you want to have immediate impact. You want to just do a deep dive. You want to jump in um, and get things going immediately. But I was so thankful that my boss, he, he already knew that like, you're going to need time. And I'm so thankful that he reminded me to just give myself some grace. Give myself some time to just learn the organization and, you know, feel my way through it because I needed that. But I can totally see how some people can just be overwhelmed because you're in all these meetings. People are so smart, you know, and you may not feel like you're adding any value or you may not, you may feel like you don't belong here, but you do. It just takes some time to just get used to everything. Um, uh, so I would just say, give yourself some grace. Imposter syndrome is is real, but you know you'll get through it and find find your way um, within the company. Yeah, get through it. I'm not trying to get sued <laughs> for, for for copyright infringement, but you know the song. Count on me, right? Uh, anyway, yeah. so <laughs> so yo, you get through it. No, you absolutely will get through it because imposter syndrome is real, but do not let it cripple you. Right. Don't don't, don't let it freeze you up. Don't let it make you run away flight. You gotta fight, right? You gotta fight through it. Oh, this that question that, that the next question you brought up, I'm gonna bring it up right now because I think it's so good. How does someone transition? What's the right way to transition? I don't think there is a right way to transition. Um, mm. I think everybody's path is different. One thing I do like about the tech industry is that everybody's journey to tech is different. We all come from so many different backgrounds. When I joined Microsoft, I didn't I, I didn't even ask people what school they went to anymore because not everybody went to school. So, mm. it's like, you know, I work with people that have zoology degrees or I used to work at Sam's Club. Like there's no right or wrong way to pivot. Um, you can go get certifications if you want. Um, that's fine. Um, I will always tell people to look at the job description. If the job description lists like X, Y, Z certification and the preferred qualifications, OK, well, maybe you should go get that for that particular role to be competitive. Um, but I would say it's not required. Um, but networking is key. Networking is key. No longer are we uh, in the days where you apply online and just sit back and wait for an email response. Like use LinkedIn, use Indeed, whatever platform you know that works best for you. I even think that TikTok recruiters are on TikTok now just <laughs> being, uh, jobs out there. So you use the resources, use social media, you know, uh, networking is so powerful. Go to there's so many conferences now. And a uh, quick plug, but Google has conference scholarships. 
Um, they have a list of, uh, you can apply, students and professionals can apply um, on Google's website to be sponsored to go to a, 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 a conference. You can select up to three. They'll pay for your flight, your hotel, and have you experience the conference. So I recommend everybody <laughs> to go. Let's take a look at that. Um, a wide range of just tech conferences uh, to attend throughout the year. So get some face time, uh, you know, make an investment in yourself and buy that flight, buy that hotel, pay for that registration, and just get some face time with some of these recruiters at these different conferences. Um, so I, I hear people do the certifications, I hear boot camps, I hear apprenticeships, all of those are good. Um, and just getting some face time with recruiters, looking on LinkedIn for hiring managers, um, and just building those relationships, I would say. So if you're looking to pivot, you know, make sure that you're tailoring your LinkedIn profile. A lot of recruiters are starting to find candidates through LinkedIn. Recruiter, like those who have access to LinkedIn recruiter, like they are really looking at your profile. So make sure mm. you have those keywords related to the, the role that you're looking for, because it actually, I mean, it really works. Um, so this, and making sure, you know, you tailor everything to, the role that you're the role that you're seeking so that's what i would say Ooh. i was still stuck on the google will pay for your hotel gonna pay for you yeah. if you get through and i've heard of it but i didn't know they're gonna pay for all that i thought it was like yeah we'll pay for your conference trip no they, they google's like we'll we'll pay the whole thing yeah that is listen y'all we they'll don't say do not say that treasure trolls were not discovered here i'm just saying <laughs> they, we we were excavating <laughs> We've been finding you some treasure co treasure chests and all sorts of gems and diamonds in this in, in this ruffle here. So so let's let's go into something that I heard you say you were recruiting and you spoke to students. Mm -hmm. Did is that where your passion for seeing students break into this tech space grow? Like where yeah. did that passion come from? It came from that. So when I was at Chevron, Chevron didn't have full time recruiters like a lot of tech companies have. So they would just send out an application to the engineers and say, hey, is anybody interested in going to this conference or going to this school to recruit for yeah, full time right. and intern roles? And I always raised my hand like the first first year I was there, I was raising my hand just because I wanted to get that experience and go back and be on the other side of the table <laughs> to recruit students. So I ended up being on getting on the team that recruited at Georgia Tech. So I was on the Georgia Tech recruiting team and eventually made my way up to recruiting team lead. So every September, we will go to Atlanta, go to the career fair, we'll do the info session, we'll do on-site interviews and recommend students for uh, recommend students for um, internships or full-time roles. So I just fell in love with just talking to students, sharing my story, helping them navigate this whole career space. Um, I love talking to students at the career fair. And after so many after so many interviews, after so many career fairs, you start to kind of you know, see what's really going on there. <laughs> mm. um, and just the confidence level and students, you know, I, I it got to the point where within five seconds of, you know, meeting a student that came with that was in our line, I can already tell like if they're going to get an interview or not. And just right. the important, just the importance of a student attending. I, I, I just, I just used to have so many tips for students when they attend career fairs, like making sure that you know, if we go to an info, if we're doing an info session and we're going to the career fair, try to go to both events because I can like you, but if we have limited interview spots, I need you, I need someone else to, to compliment. Like if I say, oh, Joseph deserves an interview, they're going to ask me why. So I need, I need my, my, my teammate to also have spoken to Joseph and be like, yeah, you know what? he was really good. Let's go ahead and put him in. So just talking to one person on the team isn't enough, but you actually have to, you know, go talk to a lot other a lot of other people because when we come together and try to figure out who's going to get these limited spots that we have, it's good that most more more than one person knows your name. Um, that's how I fell in love with it. Um, I actually just started. I, I I eventually started loving to do the doing that more than my like day to day role. Um, so I would just do more and more of that, um, volunteer to go fill in at other schools or just other conferences and just really help students um, and really connect with different organizations on campus as well. Um, so it's just so that they can get exposed to. So that's how I fell in love with the, the whole recruiting space, the whole career development, professional development space for collegiate students and which kind of led to me starting Student Career Studio. Yeah, that is so good. Student career studio. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but I want to go back to something you said. Yeah, Advo advocacy. 
when you have somebody that can advocate for you that says, hey, you know, I spoke to them. They're good. They're good. Let's, let's interview them. And that's what happens when you meet people such as Calicia and also other people within your network that can advocate for you yeah. in rooms that you may not be able to get into and open doors and possibilities for you that you may not have been able to open for yourself. Absolutely. Whew. That is so good. So let's go because I'm, I'm, I'm itching for this part. We're here. We're here. <laughs> student Career Studio. Can you talk to the people about it? For those who don't know what Student Career Studio is. Yeah, Student Career Studio is a 501c3 nonprofit organization where we provide collegiate students opportunities that their campus career center doesn't know about. So mm -hmm. we fill in that gap. So, for example, I'm in Houston. So University of Houston, Texas Southern. The students at Texas Southern do not have the same access to companies and just resources like the students at University of Houston because of funding, uh, because maybe companies will go to University of Houston career fair, but not come to Texas Southern career fair, you know, just and just so we're here to fill that gap. We're here to let students know that regardless of what school you attend, you should have equal access to opportunities um, across the board. So that's what we're that's our that's our why. And, and and just so I can clarify for those that are listening, is this, let's say there, this is basically sounds like it's for college age students. So basically mm -hmm. your, your junior, senior level college age students that are looking to kind of go into a career. Is that what you're, that's what this is geared uh, for? Even a freshman, any, any, any collegiate student. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and this is a question just in case somebody's wondering like, hey, you know what? I, I didn't feel like college was is for me what, and I'm leaving high school now. Would it be something that I could take advantage of as well? Would that be for somebody as well or it has to be somebody that's in college? Most of the opportunities that we share are for college students. Um, mm -hmm. but, I, but actually, uh, uh, maybe two weeks ago, we did share um, an apprenticeship that Google was hosting where it was not for people in school. It was not for people that had a degree and it was not for people that had more than one year of experience. It was people who, you know, didn't have a college degree, weren't pursuing one and was interested in tech. So every now and then wow. we do come across a few opportunities like that, that we share as well. That is so cool. I'm going to have all of this in the description below. So definitely <laughs> check that out, but I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I actually want to pull up on the screen, the website here so you can check it out for yourself student career studio and and as i go through this website for, feel free Calicia, to kind of speak on things that are here but i'm just going to speak basically speak on what i can see bridging the gap between opportunities and students so you see student opportunities here there's places for people to donate over here and we're going yeah, down if you click on that student opportunities it'll take you to sure. all of our current opportunities um the the links directly to the application and the information is right there so wow. I know like even for me, when I try to find opportunities that take you, you, there's so many different clicks and twists and turns just to get to the actual page. So we want to make it easy and convenient for you all um, as well. So And there's and they're recognizable brands here, y'all. There, there's oh, yeah, Netflix, sure. there's Google, there's all sorts of things here. And there's scholarships here as well, I see. Yes, we just um, we have, we do an annual scholarship. This is our sixth annual scholarship cycle. We awarded fifteen students uh, one thousand dollars scholarships. So we gave out fifteen thousand dollars this year. We do it every spring. So stay tuned um, next year for the application. And this adds up. Listen, y'all, I'm still scrolling, but this all adds up. So if you're thinking like, man, I want to get one of these scholarships, if you're a parent watching this. And you have a student, a, a, a son or daughter who's in school right now. This is a great opportunity. So definitely click on the link. Definitely do research because we know that it takes money to go, go to school. We yeah. all feel it afterwards, especially when, when it's like the side maid's knocking on our door. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to ease that. Uh, burden there and get into some great wow Cisco Network Academy. I heard of that. This oh, that's you, you, really it's not good. scrolling on my side. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I forgot to share my screen. Thank you so much. So yeah, I'm busy. Like I'm having a good old time. Oh yeah. Like, so this is this is our this is where the, <laughs> all the links are to the actual opportunities. So you have scholarships, um, scholarships to go to conferences. Uh, United Negro College Fund has a Domino's Pizza scholarship that we talked we just posted. Netflix yeah. has a boot camp. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Spotify. Like, these are recognizable brands, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you want to definitely check this out, I definitely encourage you to do so. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the website here so that you can, and I'm going to share it. 
uh, so you could actually see it. <laughs> that those that, that was when you click student opportunities. Now, right. if you want to say, hey, I don't have any sort of students underneath my belt, but I want to donate. There's actually a tab for that as well, and I believe it. I believe it leads you to this section here, which I'm going to share right now on the screen here. And this is really cool a way to donate, right? Is this the donation page that I have here? Is this the yes, correct one? That's correct. Awesome. So the student career studio, you could donate, you could give if you feel like, you know what, again, like I may not have a child or some or a niece or nephew or somebody that I want to be able to share this with, but I want to give to the cause you can give and you could read down here what the different opportunities, networking opportunities are with intern showcase, meetup Mondays, international student panel, networking one-on-one. Like these are great opportunities for students to take advantage of. And let's say you were like, hey, this is cool. I wanna see some other things that they have. Look at the Instagram page. There, The Instagram page is full of, definitely full of information that you can just read at a glance and see a bunch of different things here. Let me click on this one, for example. The Trailblazers of Change Scholarship. The requirements are there. Like, this is really, really thought out, really, really well done. Like, mm -hmm. everything is, like, right there, so you know what to expect if you want to go for this particular scholarship. So, like, definitely, ladies and gentlemen, take advantage of it. And Please add. I'm just. I'm kind of going crazy right now on my end. Uh, that's why I didn't realize I wasn't sharing with you because I'm actually like, oh look at that, I'm drooling. Uh, but but please share uh, if you want to share anything that I might be missing here. I'm gonna go back to the website and and then you could of course let me know if there's anything you would love to highlight here. Yeah, sure. So it's just, it's just some of the um, events that we usually host. So every fall, you mentioned the intern showcase on the donation page, which yeah. should be a little further down as well should be highlighted. Um, so that's one of our signature programs, um, the intern panel. Yes, yeah, so the intern panel is hosted usually every fall, September or October. And this is where we have students nice. who have interned over the summer talk about their experience. A lot of times when companies come on college campuses, they give you this, uh, you know, great presentation. Oh, the company is great. They talk about their benefits and everything. But the intern panel, we talk about the, we, we get answers to the real questions that you have. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when companies come on campus, students, they just want to, they just want to, they just, they're just trying to get on the interview, the interview slot, right? They're not going to, they, they feel a little intimidated. They don't want to ask the wrong questions and things like that. But the intern panel, they allow, we allow students to hear from other students. So we talk about, you know, um, how, what was the culture at the company? Some of the type of projects that you worked on. Mm. Um, did you have a mentor? Um, how did you feel throughout the summer? Do they pay for housing? Do they cover, do they cover your flight to get out there? How much did you get paid for the summer? Um, mm. did you like it? Did you really like it? Or like, does it, the, the company live up to the hype, you know, things like that. So we talk, we answer real, real questions just to give students more of an intimate space to get real answers about various companies. It's always an insightful conversation and gives Ooh. you a much better insight into what it is to work for this company. And it just gives, gives you um, insight into the type of opportunities that are out there. So we usually have a diverse panel as far as like industry that the student worked in and as well as like their major um, to cover a wide range of um, opportunities. So it's a really, really good program. So stay tuned for that this fall. Oh my, this is invaluable, ladies and gentlemen. You got a recruiter panel. You're talking to recruiters. Yeah. Recruiters. From college. You got yeah. networking. You got grad school panels. So people that basically were where you were not too long ago are you get yeah. to talk with them and ask questions. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is if there was a price tag associated with this, it you know, it, it will be up there. <laughs> There's people that are paying thousands of dollars for this. And yeah. this is a resource being provided to students. And look at that. We've helped our students get to Boeing, Dell, you know, you name it. These are really reputable companies. And I know the list goes on and on here. 3M, American Express. These are companies that you have seen and heard of. Like, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you, you got to want to tap into this for sure. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything here because I want to get I want to squeeze out all of the juices out of this. Right. Um, yeah. And so, oh, I didn't even click on this. This is like the list of scholarships. Is this the same link that from before? Um, I need to actually update that with our current list of scholarship recipients. But that that's where people could go to the link to go to get the link for the application. Um, but we don't have an application open right now. We just 
I'm selected this the recipient. So it'll be open next year. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, this is this is still yeah. this is still great. So with that being said, I think there's a lot that we can do for our students. Like my heart specifically for me, um, this like I said, there's a lot we can do for our students. And my heart is kind of geared towards that 18 year old. Uh, maybe even the junior in high school who's like, you know what, I want to go to college. Um, I want to get, I'm, I'm, for whatever reason, I can't get scholarships. I want to get working right away. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, okay, what, what are your skills sets? And, and then I would talk to them and they'll be like, okay, this and that, you know, um, I sold this, whatever, working at, like you said, it could be a, a subway shop or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, hey, have you thought about getting into tech sales? Because many companies, they don't require you to have a degree. They, you know, if you could come in with some sort of training, they would hire you. Um, and there's through the course careers, that's the boot camp that I went through. There are 18 year olds that are literally making six figures and right in tech boot camps and uh, in tech companies working in tech sales in different areas like that. And so if a person that's listening I definitely want you to check out Student Career Studio, especially if you're in college, especially if you're doing that. If you're if you're a student that's in high school that does not feel like, uh, you know, that that right now college is not a thing for you, for, depending on whatever circumstance you have, definitely check out Course Careers. We do tech sales, IT, and, and we also do, which is a, a, a big one. Or the digital marketing as well, but IT has been like one of the biggest ones that we've been doing. People have been like, literally like coming in like clockwork, getting jobs through their IT program. And so there's there's options for you out there, and that's why we have yeah. these conversations. Yeah, for sure. I, and I love your story because it says exactly that. Like you literally took your work experience and said, "Huh, this this kind of like it's like a puzzle piece here. It's like Tetris. It fits here." <laughs> And you were able to become a product manager for one of the largest companies in the world. In, yeah. In human so history. Like, people, like when people think about tech, they automatically think about these big tech companies, you know, but tech is not a company. Tech is like your day to day role. You can mm. be in tech and work at a hospital. You can be in tech and work at in hospitality. Think about like I use open table to make, uh, you know, dinner reservations and re restaurant reservations. But think about the technology for that. You know, how they check you in and make and find a table for you using that user interface on that system. Um, so tech is everywhere. Any industry, there's tech. So just think about it from that standpoint. You don't have to always go shoot for these large tech companies. There's benefits of working at a small startup or working at a smaller company as well. So don't don't underestimate that as well. So, Man. Like tech is life. That's what it sounds like. Tech is a, is a part yeah. of our everyday life. <laughs> it's everything. It's part of our everyday. It's part of our everyday life. So yeah, sons oh. of opportunity too. Yeah, this is so good. I mean, this is so good. And and with that being said, family, you you've heard it here. There's so much in store for for you and for those that are college age or in, in college right now, and you want to kind of find these different avenues. This is right up your alley. So definitely. Lock it with Khaleesi. Could they reach out to you on LinkedIn? Is that okay? Like I respond to all messages. Feel free to look up my name, Khaleesia Johnson, on LinkedIn. Um, you just made me think about something else, too. Oh, so for a lot of students who don't know, you know, where they want to go work or what they want to do, just look on your phone and look at the apps on your phone. All mm. of these have opportunities. A lot of them have internships. Um, I saw Cash App was even hiring interns. I'm sure most people have Cash App. Um, so think about like the apps on your phone. Those are companies. They need everybody. And if you're not going into a technical role, you can still be in tech. There's still accountants. Yeah. There's still business, business people, um, business development. He said sales, uh, finance, even psychology. You can still be in tech. Pretty much any major. I work with I work with theater majors. They're producers for the game studios. Like Ooh. any major, even music, video games need music. That's so right. we need people in music. So don't underestimate or don't be so narrow focused on your major. Think about what you want to do with the impact you, that, that you want to have. Look at your phone. If you like taking trips, apply to one of the airlines. You know, um, I, we posted a, we posted a, 
Yeah, we posted an opportunity with Alaskan Airlines and their interns actually get flight benefits during the summer while they're working. So there's so many benefits, so much opportunity out there. So if you have no idea where you want to work or what company you want to work for, just start with the, the apps on your phone and just see if they have internship opportunities. Most of them do. So I'm done. I'm done, y'all. <laughs> This is so good. Like, this is so good. Like, you got me spinning. We got to talk off offline after this. But because <laughs> I, I I can't see it right now. We can talk off the line. But this is this is so good. I might have to do, I'm going to bring you back for Q&A. We could talk about that, too. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> everybody, be, everybody, their mom and their grandma will be like. I see it. I see it. Oh, man. So, man, I got to say it for later. I got to say it for later. So. With that being said, you know what I'm, I know when I'm juiced up like this. It's been good. It's a good one. It's a good one. So y'all, like I said, fill up the comment notes with some takeaways that you have. If you have any questions, uh, she said you could do it. I was, I, I'm kind of scared for her now, but you can reach out to her on LinkedIn. Yeah. Hit me up on LinkedIn. I, I live on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, is, that, that's my bread and butter. So feel free to reach out anytime. That's what I'm here for. A lot of times, like I still message people and don't get responses, you know. Um, oh. So I'm always about climbing that ladder, but also extending my hand to those those behind me. So we can all help each other rise up to the top. So I'm always here. Use me as a reference. Um, you know, I want to be the change I wish to see. Some people get into these high positions and uh, just forget about the rest of us. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm a door opener. I'm not a gatekeeper. I want to open doors. I want to be resourceful to you as much as I can. So, yeah, feel free to reach out. Ditto. I'm right there with you. Ditto. Opening doors. Well, man, with that being said, before one of my kids knocks on the door, <laughs> with that being <laughs> said, till next time, family, this has been so good. We, Khaleesi and I, hope to see you on the other side. Take care, family. See ya. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs>